On the 26th of May, 2022, Grafton Library hosted the launch of the Mackey Archive. Join us now in listening to the speeches of Catherine Breward, Victoria Keane and Nola Mackey, welcoming the new Clarence Regional Library collection. Morning, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Bunchalot Eagles, traditional custodians of these lands on which this meeting is taking place, and pay tribute and respect to their elders past, present and emerging the Bunchalot, Gumbangia and Yagel nations, which lie within the council boundaries. Now just a bit of housekeeping uh, to start off with. The bathrooms are just to your right as you head out the door. If for some unfortunate reason we need to evacuate the building, we just need to head down the stairs and the assembly point is at the back of the library under the jacaranda tree. If you're in the library itself and up towards the back of the, the library, there is an evacuation um, exit up there as well that you can use. Right, thank you for coming and I'll hand over to the background to the staff. So, thank you. I'd just like to acknowledge today, before we begin the rest of the proceedings, that today is National Sorry Day. And the library team are wearing their Aboriginal collection t shirts in acknowledgement of this. And I'd like to encourage you all to consider learning about First National Stories through the library's Aboriginal collection, where we have biographies of that carbon achievements of First Nations people, as well as the tragic personal stories of the Dalton generation. We can also celebrate these achievements at our regional gallery if you are interested in further cultural activities today, as they have a beautiful exhibition of works from Bunjan Women Roman Bancroft and an exhibition cur curated by Frances Bell Parker, the Able Woman. So I'd like to officially welcome now Vernon and Nola, councillors, and our invited guests and community members to this morning's launch. Um, I have a number of apologies that I'll just briefly read out to you for people who are unable to attend today. Um, and they include uh, Mayor Peter Tyler, General Manager Laura Black, Councillor Peter Johnston, Elizabeth Webb from the Glen Rain Memorial Museum, and Justin Foots, who is my Manager of Cultural Community Industry. So. When Nola Mackey approached Clarence Regional Library looking for a home for a local studies and genealogy collection, we were very excited at the possibilities of having such a collection. We saw it as an opportunity for the Clarence Regional Library to become a destination for people researching local history across the Northern Rivers and for people researching their family history. After an initial visit in December 2018, Yes, it is going back a few years now. To assess the size of the collection, the library began receiving items into the archive in February 2019. There was a steady collection of material until March 2020, when COVID-19 pandemic brought things to a grinding halt. Since last year, we have slowly recommenced collecting items and now have over a thousand books of which 955 of them have been catalogued into our library system. We have over a thousand maps, both originals and copies, microfilm and microfiche from historic newspapers and records from the State Records Office, and over 30,000 digital scans from the local paper. All of these live items have been meticulously recorded and catalogued by Nola and Vernon, greatly assisting our process of adding them to our system. However, it has still been a massive job, and I would like to thank the regional services team, who I've talking about this room at the moment, with their Aboriginal shirts on, who have worked so hard um, so that we can now provide access to our community. So I'd like to take this opportunity to applaud everyone involved in the project. Noel and Vernon, the library team, and if I have some assistance here, yes. <laughs> we would like to present you with a small gift in acknowledgement of your work and dedication to this project. So, step on. Yes. 
Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, that was a good choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nola Mackey has been researching and writing about local history in the Clarence Valley and further afield for over 50 years. Since completing her studies in family, local and applied history, she has written many books, compiled many indexes and curated a unique collection of books, microfiche, microfilm, photographs, maps, newspaper clippings, documents and ephemera. Nola has volunteered many hours of her time at the Clarence River Historical Society and the Grafton Youth 3 her involvement in the Reflections on the Clarence Oral History Project helped to capture the stories of some of the Clarence's most prominent residents. Her contribution to collecting and recording the local history of the Clarence Valley is invaluable, and we are fortunate that her collection is found at home at the library. And I would like to invite Nola up to tell us about her journey from school teacher to well known and sought after local and family historian. Thank you, Victoria. Good morning, everyone. You wouldn't think that I have spent a lifetime lecturing to people. It's, it's I've been standing up in front of 30 or 40,000 at an international conference and deliver without a worry. When you have 30 or 40 people in the room that everybody knows you, that's a totally different thing. <laughs> so, you put up with me this morning. Then, first of all, thank you, everyone, for, for coming. And Launching the Mackie archives, what the devil does that mean? Um, and what are the Mackie archives in, in their form? It's a private collection of thousands of books, microfilms, microfish, photographs, maps, newspaper clippings, documents, and ephemera on local and family history, the majority of which showcases the Clarence River district in northern New South Wales. How, historically, this district stretched from the Maclay in northern, including Clarence, Richmond, Brunswick and Tree Rivers, and then up to Moreton Bay or Brisbane. It also encompasses the area from the east coast of New South Wales westward to the New England ranges. Today's launch is a celebration of the transfer of this collection into the care of the Clarence Regional Library. How did this all come about and why now? As you all realise, a story spanning more than 50 years is long and complicated. But this morning, I will confine myself to a few highlights. I have always had a certain passion for history. This was fostered by my maternal grandmother, with whom I spent many hours as a child, listening to stories of gold mines, bush rangers, and colourful family characters. For many years, I was their primary carer. She also encouraged me to trace our ancestry, which one, you know, at the time was not um, something that people did, which has been a lifetime journey, yet not completed. It's important to note my forefathers were not early pioneers of the parish of this not having arrived on the Creed River until well into the 20th century. In 1968, I was appointed to the teaching staff of West Lawn Public School Grafton and was soon introduced to Shaper House, the newly opened home of the Clarence River Historical Society. I just loved all this history in one place, even though there was no connection to my family. As of this year, I have been a member of the Clarence River Historical Society for 48 years, 18 of those serving the society on the executive committee, firstly as honorary secretary and later as honorary research officer. During this time, I discovered what an incredible and unique part of the world the Clarence River District is. Particularly the Clarence River itself, including Bradford. How many today's communities are made of descendants of not only three Aboriginal nations who have been here for perhaps thousands of years, but also English, Scottish, Irish, German, Italian, Swiss, French, White Russian, Dutch, Greek, Chinese and Pacific Islander immigrants, all of whom settled here in the 19th and 20th century. You could say a melting pot of humanity. 
Have you heard of Sir Grafton Elliot Smith, the eminent Egyptologist and anthropologist? William Kirshner, Australia's first German consul. Virginia Bassetti and the Drummond Sisters, great opera singers. Sir Ivan Mackay, the great war hero. Sir Earl Page, surgeon, politician and leader of the Australian Country Party. Or Sun Yat Sen, the leader of the nationalist movement in China. I could add many more men and women to this impressed list. Are these some of my illustrious ancestors? No. But these famous and inspirational people all have some connection to the planet. Now, back to Australia, uh, today's story. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, I continued my research into and my ancestors, and that my husband's parents, and also helped those interested in tracing Clarence Griffith families. During this time, I undertook professional studies in family and local and applied history as a distant education or external student through Sydney and Armadale educational faculties. Due to the fact I lived so far away from the large cities, where all the big libraries and archives were. And although I had the office of the staff of the parish regional library within the library loan, I found it difficult to get the necessary material for my assignments and thesis. I invested heavily in books, microfilm, microfiche, and copies of original records from libraries and archives throughout Australia to complete those studies. Remember, this was long before the internet. This was the beginning of the Mackie Archives. When I say Mackie Archives, although it has been my obsession and I have been the driving force, I could not have achieved such a perfection without the support and help of my husband, Vern, and children, Robin, Scott, and Janelle. In 1992, Vernon's circumstances required me to step down as research officer at the Clarence of Historic Society and teaching in the public and private school system. But I was able to continue to invest in more books, microfilm and micro CDs, etc. But I was able to acquire copies of original material, which allowed me to rise to the top of my profession. I wrote and published more than 70 publications in book and microfiche format. Over 40 of these were on a clown of history. Not forgetting three work co authored with Jean Bollitude, June Kepper, and Dr. Jeff Burkhardt. I have not only had the support of my family, but a large network of friends from all walks of life, far too numerous to name, but who helped me track down and acquire copies of original material from libraries, archives and private collections all around the world. These people are individually acknowledged in each of my publications. I must say at this stage, my collection was to supplement and complement, not duplicate, material held by other private facilities, such as historical and family history societies throughout the region. Over this time, I also shared my expertise and interest to help others achieve their goals in recording family and local history too. My private library and archives was always open to student friends research. However, I would like to especially mention a few people who have stood the test of time over many years. Of course, my husband Vern, who, after retirement, joined me in the business and took on the task of digitising all my card index, newspaper cuttings, and documents. Some 30,000 images so far, and there's still more to come. He also tagged them so they are easy accessible. We just put in the criteria and up come pictures. Jean and Arthur Bolichu, who not only helped in many necessary excursions to Sydney libraries and archives, but also joined us on private archaeological surveys in the old Garden of Mountain towns of Mount Clarence and assisted with photographic or computer work. Nancy Eggers helped curate and catalogue these books into the library Dewey system. She's also been my chief proofreader. June Kepper helped with transcribing original records held in Sydney, as well as locally, and an expert typist typed some of my early manuscripts. Dr. Jeff Burkhardt, who co-authored the book on Clarence Schubert, German Immigrants. And by the way, I do not have any German ancestry at all, although Jeff was from Clarence too. And he helped me track down out of print and obscure books in my library. I wanted something that I could not find with, Jeff was the man to go to. 
Michelle Herkel, Historical Officer with the Clown Lands Park, who educated me in the use of land records and helped me acquire a large collection of maps of the Northern Rivers areas when the Lands Department went digital and no longer required the hard copies. I'm very appreciative to have Vern, our daughter-in-law Michelle, our daughter Janelle and her children Georgie and Sebastian, Jean, Arthur and Nancy here this morning. For various reasons, the others couldn't be here, but they sent their best wishes. In 2012, after 20 years of my dream job, due to ill health and other issues, I closed business. Although I still plan to carry on researching our families, the problem arose what to do with this huge collection of thousands of books, microfish, microfilms, photographs, maps, news, paper clippings, documents and ephemera from Clarence Street District. So I had no more use for Ideally, I wanted the collection to stay locally and available both to the hobbyists and students starting out on their own tertiary journey. I always had a great relationship with the Catholic and Grafton Branch Libraries, but in 2012, they were busy trying to find new homes themselves and were not interested in adding to their problems by taking my collection, <laughs> so it stayed on my shelves. Fast forward to 2018. We now had a new and regional library complex in the city centre, a new regional librarian, an experienced local studies librarian, and a highly qualified archivist and restorer now on the staff. We also had a new educational hub for tertiary students next door. I approached the library staff about my collection after a visit. They were very keen, especially when they learned we wished to give to the city. You would think it would be easy just to hand out the collection to the library. However, there were many hurdles. Not only legal ownership, copyright and documentation of such a collection, but the cataloging to make it available to the public. For the last four years I have been documenting and cataloging this collection, not only to make it available to the public, but also in a way for it not to become a burden to the library staff. I, believe this is not the size of the gift to the community that is important, but why we have chosen to make it. With the rapid advance of the digital age and instant gratification, I believe as a society we are now becoming emotionally undernourished in terms of understanding and feeling a kinship with our heritage. Our history can only provide the basis for understanding of time through the perception of change that is, a past, present and future. History provides us with insights into our past society, cultures and values, and of course mistakes, which we do not really want to repeat, but it also is the frame of reference with which we understand ourselves. In other words, knowledge is power, and aided by experience leads to wisdom. My hope that this collection is the core of a community-based collection that is unique, and from time to time is strategically added to by others in the future. A source of information, inspiration for the next and future generations so that they have the knowledge, confidence and courage to go out into the world and do great things just as their ancestors did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. For more information on the Mackie Archive, you can go to our website at crl.nsw.gov.au and search under the Menu or Services tab for Mackie Archive Collection. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and check out our other videos on this channel.